If you want to know the best way and the easiest way to install a bird box on your wall, then this is the video for you. So in this video, we are going to be installing one of our very own Wildy Garden roost boxes, obviously for any bird boxes, roost boxes, bat boxes, hedgehog boxes, boxes galore, check out wildyergarden.com, the online shop guys. If you're in the UK, we can custom make every single one of these, which are very well built, as you can see, all notched. They've got drainage holes, very well put together, 18 mil, Ply with this is finished ply which is laminated to the extent that it doesn't delaminate no matter how many winters you throw at it. It really are they really are a fantastic solid construction and uh, yes in my eyes the best on the market of course. Anyway today we're going to be looking at how you can put a bird box on your wall um, and we'll take a little bit of a look as to how you can put one on a tree as well but generally speaking this is to show you out there how you can put one of these on your wall. Now a roost box by the way if you're wondering you're thinking why is the hole at the bottom this is something that we've had uniquely we've worked with the manufacturer to uh, come up with this idea myself and Nikki to uh, allow birds to be able to roost in a box because our bird boxes traditionally are always for birds to nest in but obviously they need somewhere to sleep at night and during the winter months they need somewhere warm that's why all these edges are airtight they're all notched in they're all sealed there's no hinges this is a really nice warm solid house for them in the winter time so and if you do want to get in to maintain them or clean them out it's just two screws on the top and then that comes out of the notch on the back plate. So a really easy way for you to get in there to clean these out in the autumn and winter time. Now, I'm not going to explain all the different bird boxes and all the positions where you should be putting these in this video. I've already done that in a previous video of which I'll put a link to at the end of this one, which is the best boxes for your garden to attract wildlife. Uh, I go into depth in all the different species of birds you can expect to attract if you're in the UK or the Northern Hemisphere. But in this instance, we're looking at putting up one of these roosting boxes. Now, normally as a rule of thumb, I would be looking to put these in a warm position so a south or a west facing position where the birds are going to be spending the night so especially on a wall this in the summertime is going to get nice and warm this brickwork so uh, come the evening when things get cooler we can still get cool evenings through uh, May April May and June and even July sometimes then this is going to stay nice and warm for longer so and in here is a series of horizontal dowels for lots and lots of birds to perch onto so south or west facing position for one of these roost boxes but again i'm not going to go into that detail so let's get stuck in and see what you're going to need to carry out these works so as a rule of thumb what you're going to need for this project is obviously the box you are looking to put up in this case it's a roost box it could be a robin box a blue tip box uh, any type of bird box or bat box it the rules still apply you are going to need one times drill driver other models are available, other makes are available. Uh, this one has a hammer setting, you can see just there, which is obviously beneficial for when you're drilling into brickwork, mortar. Uh, that's what gives it the really annoying loud noise that you hear some of your neighbors um, <laughs> making on a Sunday bank holiday. Um, not me, obviously I do like to respect my neighbors. Uh, so you're going to need a drill. doesn't matter whether it's cordless like this, corded, whatever. Uh, this is an 18 volt uh, combi drill. So it's a drill driver. So it's for drilling and for uh, driving if you want it to and different settings, etc., etc. And you're also going to need a drill bit. Uh, now, normally I would say you're going to need two sizes of drill bit. Now, this is a seven mil drill bit. Sorry for you. Uh, guys from America out there, you're going to have to convert this into inches. Uh, well, seven mil is about a quarter inch, give or take. <laughs> um, so you're going to need a seven mil drill bit. That's because we're going to be using these raw plugs. Raw plugs, R A W L. Interesting fact: when I was growing up as a kid, my dad was a carpenter. Every time he referenced these, I always thought he was saying wall plugs as in w-a-w-l because they were going in a wall they are in fact r-a-w-l wall plugs so we're going to be using these now these are a seven mil wall plug 
uh, and they're about an inch and a half well yeah knocking on an inch and a half uh, in length which is ample for what we're trying to hang here obviously for bigger boxes you need bigger fitments uh, bigger fixings etc so we're going to be using a seven mil raw plug and a seven mil drill bit so they go nicely so they should be similar diameter if you can see that um then you need some screws now i find for these boxes these are 18 mil ply boxes a 50 mil screw a two inch screw is ample you don't need any more than that you don't need three inch four inch but if you go much less than that it can sort of you know pull out the wall a little more easily these are a substantial box they are well built they're built to last and the 18 mil ply is the optimum uh, ply you want to be using if you're looking to make one of these boxes obviously i've done previous videos on how to make your own bird box so do check those out if you are looking to make your own uh, and you're not in the uk and we can't ship to you and you're a diy hats off to you so 50 mil screw uh, this is a 4 by 50 mil screw, actually the 4 is reference, reference to the width, so 4 mil by 50 mil, and that's going to go in our 7 mil rule plug along, well, this is going to be drilled by our 7 mil drill bit. You're also going to need a hammer, potentially, just for knocking the rule plug into the wall. There's a little bit of a way to cheat if you don't have a hammer. Most people have a hammer. And if you're obviously going above you know a few feet off the ground which this is going to go about seven foot off the ground it's going to go somewhere this is a flat roof on top just a single story but i'm going to put this out of the way so it can't get um looked in by any cats should we say very easily so it's a reasonable way off the ground the good birds are going to feel a bit safer going into something of that height if you're doing that you're going to need a pair of step ladders obviously make sure there's someone with you to hold the step ladders not like me today <laughs> although i'm only going up a couple of rungs so uh I should be fine. These are very well built sturdy step ladders. So that's about all you're gonna need guys. You might need a pencil as well, depending on the method, uh, but I'll come on to that in a moment. So let's get these ladders in position. I'm gonna adjust the camera and let's start getting this box up. First tip, if you are working off a ladder, try and get everything on the level platform of the ladder so you don't have to keep going up and down, up and down. It's a bit easier. Now with this box, I have one pre-drilled hole. This is how they come on the Wildy Garden online shop. I have a pre-drilled hole in the top, which is, I believe, looks like about a four mil hole. Now my drill bit is bigger. So in a normal situation, if you want this to go somewhere specific, I would recommend having a smaller drill bit, like a multi-drill bit, not metal or stone or wood, but you can get multi-drill bits, which is what these drill bits are, that will go through all three. They'll go through wood, metal, stone. Because if you try and mark through this timber into the wall where you want the hole to be, then you can absolutely ruin a wood bit uh, if you're not careful. So um, it'll go through the wood fine, but it'll just, um, it'll blunt the end of your drill bit quite quickly. So you want some, uh, some multi bits if you can. So they'll go through all three metal, wood and stone. And I'd get a four mil drill bit because you don't, the key is you don't want this hole to be too big because then your screw isn't going to grip onto it. You want your screw to have some purchase as it goes through the timber. You don't want a big gaping hole so that it's not going to actually, it's, the box is going to wobble about because the hole is too big and the screw is too small of a diameter. Then you've got to start putting bigger holes in the wall, bigger roll plugs and bigger screws. And it's just, yeah, it becomes a, a mammoth task as to what it should be. So a four mil drill bit, if you want it to go exact on this wall, I'm not too fussed as to exactly where this goes. So a four mil drill bit to go through there to mark the wall. And then you pull that out and then you will put a seven mil drill bit in to go into the wall. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But in this instance, I'm happy with that could even come down to there. This is a roosting box, so they're not going to be spending a huge amount of time in here, apart from during the evening, of course. So it's not got to be the perfect position for nesting. Generally, if you're putting one of these up, I tend to aim for one of the mortar joins rather than the brick face itself, just because if you're going into brick, it can blow the face of the brick off if you ever do take it down then you've got a bit of a hole in your brick. So if you're going into mortar and it ever comes out, then all you've got to do is put a bit of mortar in, but it's pretty difficult to patch up a brick face. So yes, I tend to put mine in the mortar joint. So I know roughly where it wants to go. 
I'm not going to put it right on the edge because I don't want any of the northerly winds to sort of come in from that direction. I want to keep this box nice and warm. So I'm actually going to move it in a little bit. In fact, I'm going to put it there. That should be fine. This bush is kept to this height, so uh, it's not likely there's going to be any cats in there. It's a very scraggly bush. I say scraggly, I don't mean that. It's a very sparse bush, I say. It would be difficult for a cat to sit on the top of it. So uh, I'm going to put mine there. I might just move it up a tad. Okay, so when you know where you want to put your box, it's a case of drilling the hole. Now I'm going in this brickwork, like I say, straight with my seven mil drill bit. If you've got particularly hard mortar, then you can use a smaller drill bit first, like a four mil to start you off. Um, and then you're not just forcing the drill bit in. If you've got a really old drill bit, you're gonna know about it. You're gonna be trying to push and push and push. And again, the hammer setting on one of these does help because it's constantly doing like a pneumatic drill and trying to sort of knock into the wall as well as drill. So it goes in a lot quicker. Um, but you don't have to have the hammer setting. You can just drill into the wall. It'll take a little bit longer. I'll give you an example of what both sound like. So this is on normal drill. To give you the idea, and this is on hammer. Now, obviously, before you drill any holes in any brickwork, I'd strongly recommend you test to see whether there's any cable. You can easily get electrical detectors from your local DIY store. Um, I have checked with these internally and externally. Obviously, there's nothing on the external part of this wall. This is actually part of uh, a store on the outside of the house, so I know I'm not going to go into any internal wires or anything. There's no plugs or anything electrical work inside, and I have checked inside uh, before I started drilling. So, and normally with these buildings, they're a double skin, so there's two layers of brickwork, if you like, with a cavity in the middle. So it's unlikely you're going to go through, even if you go through this brickwork into the internal course of bricks inside. Of course, do check with your drill bit and don't go in too far. For this, I've only gone in just a bit more than the actual depth of the raw plug itself. So two, two and a half inches, absolutely ample. These bricks will be four inch, 100 mil thick. So I know I'm safe. I'm not going to poke through into the cavity behind. Then I can get my raw plug, pop it in, and sometimes you just need to give it a little knock with a hammer. That's gone perfect, nice and flush. What you don't want is your raw plug to be sticking out because then it's not going to get the full grip of when you send the screw in. The idea is when your screw goes into the raw plug and you screw it in, it opens out, pushes out, you know, it sort of opens out the raw plug inside, which opens into the brick joint. That's what gives it that firm, snug fit. So once you've got your raw plug in the wall like that, we can now offer the box up. But first, what I would recommend, I'm gonna come down for this, because I'm actually going to uh, cheat a little bit and I'm gonna get my combi drill, uh, because I'm feeling lazy and I can't be bothered to take that out and then put a drill driver head in. So <laughs> with you in a sec. So I've just picked up my combi drill for ease. This is an, um, sorry, not combi drill. This is an impact driver. So this one is great for sending screws in. That's all it does. Send screws in all day long. I've built many a deck, many a fence with these, but you don't need one of these. You can just put a little sort of Phillips head, if you like, into the end of your combi drill if you need to. They have torque settings on them anyway, so you can put it in the end of that drill. You don't need two drills for this. I'll give you a quick tip now, before you get yourself in a position where you're trying to line the hole up and you're not quite sure, and then you're trying to hold your box and put your screw in, put your screw in the hole before you offer your box up. This is especially handy when you're up the top of a ladder and you're putting some boxes up, like I've got to do tomorrow where I'm putting up some house martin box on this property and any higher boxes like house sparrow boxes, styling boxes, it's a lot easier if you've got everything as easy as possible when you're at height. So I'm just gonna offer this screw in to the point where the screw is actually just coming out the back. So you can see, the screw's out the back. That's gonna be easier to locate exactly where the wall plug is on the wall. So, time to put my money where my mouth is. Uh, 
that's where I think it's over the hole. Now time to put the screw in. So you can hear that hammer effect on the drill. That's just why these impact drivers are so good because they again use like a hammer action to knock the screw in as it's as this, the as the drill is turning the screw in, it's knocking it in as well. So particularly good if you're going through a very um, strong hardwoods like oak or something. So and I've just tightened that up to the point where I'll put an overlay in where the screw is just below the surface of the timber. You don't want to go so far and it starts sending the screw through the timber and then you've not actually got that much purchase in the timber. You just want it so it's just just below flush if that makes sense and that is now nice and solid. You can with these put a second hole in the bottom. Uh, there's not much of a fixing plate on the bottom of this. It doesn't really need it because that is nice and sturdy. It's not going to blow off that's for sure. I'll just give it a couple more turns. And again, you don't want to go so far. You don't want to go so far with the impact driver that you then, uh, the, the screw starts spinning. Once the screw starts spinning, you've got no grip and it's time to pull it out and put a, put a bigger roll plug in or a bigger screw in indeed to, uh, to have some purchase. So that's that box nicely up. Obviously, if you're wanting to put one in the bottom, you can do, in fact, do you know what? I'll show you anyway. <laughs> Let's go the full hog. So although there's not a great deal on the back plate that comes below the bottom of the box, there's enough for me to get a screw up at an angle. And what I can do here is just move the box. If I actually loosen the top screw just a little bit, actually twist the box to one side to be able to see where you want to screw or drill your hole. So I know this is where you would need a pencil but I know roughly I'm going to cheat a little bit just mark the hole with the screw that is the center point for where the mortar is so I know if I go in at that that should Join. Now what I'm going to do, I've just changed, I have put a little 4mm bit in uh, for this part of the job, so this again is to make sure the hole diameter through the wood is not too, not too big. Um, so I'm going to go in there now, make an initial hole, and again I've just got this on drill, I've not got it on um, drive now. So I've got this on drill, I've not got it on drive now. So that just about marks the wall. Don't want to do too much. I should have said before you do that, if you want to get it exactly plumb and level, you can put a little spirit level on the side. You don't have to. The birds aren't going to fall out. So I've got my hole there now. So what I'm going to do now, now the bird box is to one side, swap back to my seven mil drill bit to make the hole big enough for the roll plug, R-A-W-L. Put it back in hammer and enlarge the hole. Now it's time for the roll plug and uh, <laughs> blow the dust off the camera. <laughs> so that roll plug's gone in. Nice and flush already, don't really need my hammer. Little quick tip, if you don't have a hammer with you and you're up a ladder, you can just get the seven mil drill bit and just gently tap that and that'll just send the roll plug in if you can't physically push it in. And you don't want to go all the way back down to get your hammer. <laughs> so now when I put that back up, I know I've got a little mark on the wall underneath. I know where my hole is drilled underneath the box. And I go back to my impact driver and hopefully with a bit of luck you'll start to feel it bite and it'll start pulling the box back in 
and especially on a drill driver you can feel it you know uh, you can hear it start to do that hammer motion that duk, duk, duk. and it doesn't have to be silly tight I mean at the end of the day this is a roosting box it's not right, just tighten that up at the top and there we have going to but I could stand on that if I want to <laughs> so guys there you have it one times roost box bird box bat box whatever it may be you're putting up now secure onto the side of your house now obviously there's many different types of boxes you can put up as I've said check out the previous video that I'll put a link to at the end of this one about all the different boxes you can put in your garden to help wildlife I'm happy with that. I've now got a multitude of other boxes to go and put up. Um, but I'm going to just show you very quickly how I fix one to a tree. Um, and it's very, very simple. So let's go take a quick look at that. Well, guys, I've picked a suitable holly tree for this one. I'm going to be putting this box about seven feet off the ground. So nice and clear in terms of any cats wanting to try and get onto it. Uh, and I've just picked the flattest part of the trunk. There is a little bit of a sort of a flat spot and I can almost rest it on two knots underneath of old branches. Now this one is going north facing. I mean, obviously holly being evergreen, it's going to be a pretty sheltered box, but you can see that's, you know, nice and flat against the trunk now. This is about as small a diameter as I would normally put on a tree. Um, I've put two screws in the box, one top and one bottom. Now, I know uh, some of you might be saying, well, you could use rope, um, and yes, I could. I don't normally like putting nails or screws into trees, but for the small um, initial impact this is going to have on the tree, it's so minimal that the tree will heal no problem at all. At the end of the day, you've got to remember that trees drop limbs all the time. So they're constantly healing wounds. So a tiny little four to five mil hole is no issue for the tree. And they will in fact grow around the screw, which come, brings me on to my next point, which is if you're putting a screw in a tree, don't put it all the way in because <clears throat> as we know, trees will expand with their, trees will expand their girth in time. So if you screw right the way in, what will happen quite often is if you use a nail or a screw, it can actually slowly push the box out in time and pop it off the end of the screw. So if you leave a little bit of play, and I'll put a clip in obviously in a moment of what I'm going to leave, this allows the tree to expand the box out on the screw or the nail. have it one times solid bird box fitted to the tree now as I say you can use rope if you want to the trouble with rope is it obviously does it does it can become brittle and fray and the boxes can drop off um, if, it, if it is exposed to sunlight um, plus they can slip as well uh, and also squirrels if they really wanted to which I have known in the past they can chew through the rope um, just for something to do <laughs> hey why not so yes, squirrels can be a problem. So it's best to have a couple of fixings in the top and the bottom if you can, a nail or a screw. I've used a little bit bigger screw here. I've used a 75 mil or three inch screw just to allow the purchase in the tree as well as a little bit sticking out for the, the tree to push the screw out. Sorry, the tree to push the box out onto the screw. So keep checking these on a yearly basis, guys. You might want to just undo the screw a little bit. Um, and then uh, reposition in time. But uh, yes, that's one times blue tip box happily fitted to this tree. Well guys, that is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed the video. As you can see, one times new blue tip box waiting to be explored. I've no doubt there'll be blue tips inspecting this in no time at all. And all I would say is, as always, guys, if you've enjoyed the video, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, then you will be subscribed. Well, you will be subscribed, but you'll also be notified every time I post a new video, which is every Sunday and during the week when I have the time. Uh, and of course, if you're looking to buy any of these boxes, if you're not physically able to make any of the boxes that I've 
uh, shown you today or indeed any of the boxes from any of the previous videos then do check out the wildyourgarden.com online shop guys whole range of boxes custom made for you handmade every single box in the uk you can't get better than that and thank you so much for watching as always guys any questions drop them in the comments below and i'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in your own garden in videos to come thanks for watching i'll see you soon